There is no one right way to cook a steak, and I have many favorite techniques for grilling a beautiful ribeye. I'd like to show you two methods that are both relatively easy to do and deliver mouth-watering results. These techniques use the same principles, but in different orders. I'm Russ Falk, grill master and chief designer for Kalamazoo Outdoor Gourmet. I've been a grilling enthusiast for more than 40 years, and I'm here to help you master the techniques that will take your live fire cooking to the next level. First, let's talk a little bit about direct and indirect heat. When most people think of grilling, they're thinking of direct heat. This is grilling the food directly above the fire. Direct heat is great for smaller and thinner foods that you can cook quickly, things like skirt steak, shrimp, or asparagus. Indirect heat means that the food is offset from the fire or placed high above the fire to make the heat more gentle. This type of heat is ideal for larger foods that need to cook more slowly, like a roast or a whole sweet potato. But the real magic happens when you combine both of these kinds of heat. And in my opinion, this is the ultimate way to cook a steak, allowing you to get a nice exterior crust and a perfectly done interior. First, I'll do what's called sear and slide. We'll quickly brown the steaks over a ripping hot fire before moving them away from the fire to finish cooking through more slowly. After that, I'll show you what's known as reverse sear. The steaks are first cooked slowly at a very low temperature and then seared afterwards. We'll talk a little bit about the benefits of each technique along the way. Our goal with either method is to achieve medium rare doneness all the way through the steak with a nicely browned exterior. If we used a high heat the entire time, we would easily brown the meat, but the steak would only be medium rare in the very center. If we use gentle heat the whole time, we can keep the steak medium rare throughout, but it won't have the browned exterior that is so important to flavor. We're after both, so we combine lower heat to cook the steak evenly on the inside and higher heat to achieve the flavorful and aromatic Maillard reaction that caramelizes the proteins and sugars as part of browning. To set up for my sear and slide, I load charcoal into the grilling zone on the right, and then I fire up all three dragon burners to get the charcoal going and to preheat the rest of the grill. The faster you can sear, the better your sear and slide steak will turn out. The Kalamazoo Hybrid Fire Grill is the perfect tool for this technique because I can build a blisteringly hot charcoal fire to sear very quickly. There are two main advantages to sear and slide versus reverse sear. First, the whole process takes a lot less time than reverse sear does. And second, I believe that by browning the steak first, the flavorful brown crust has more time to develop before the steak is done. I like to keep it simple, so I just treat my steaks with a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper before they hit the grill. When the charcoal fire is ready, I turn off the left and middle burners to create my indirect cooking zone. I like to flip and move my steaks a lot. Even during such a quick sear, I'm gonna flip and move my steaks every 15 seconds so that we reduce the amount of temperature migration into the inside of the steak. By rotating the steak 45 degrees to 90 degrees every time you flip it, you'll also increase the surface area of your brown grill marks, and all over browning is gonna deliver the most flavor. After 30 seconds of total searing time on each side, I'm gonna move the steaks away from the fire. This is when I'll let them coast up to the perfect internal temperature. The steaks are going to roast with the lid closed for about 20 minutes. I'm shooting for an air temperature of 500 degrees Fahrenheit on the lid thermometer. I'm gonna flip and move them every five minutes to ensure even cooking and maximum browning. While we've got some time, I'm gonna make a quick board sauce. I first read about this trick in Adam Perry Lang's book, Charred and Scruffed. It's a great way to dress a steak. Simply chop some fresh garlic, oregano, and parsley, and then combine it with a little olive oil and vinegar. The board sauce mingles beautifully with the juices from the meat. It looks like our steaks are at 120 degrees, so it's time to pull them off the grill. Let them rest on top of the board sauce for a good 10 minutes before serving. A ribeye steak is actually made up of more than one muscle. We'll skip the technical names that I can never remember, but the outer perimeter of the steak is the cap, and it surrounds the eye in the middle. These muscles have different flavors and textures, so I like to slice them separately. That way everyone can try some of each. The sear and slide method, searing at 1000 degrees and then roasting at 500 degrees, will give you beautiful results. A perfectly brown crust with a medium rare center that is nearly edge to edge perfect.
Now let's take a look at the reverse sear method. This is essentially the opposite of the sear and slide. I'm going to show you the reverse sear method using our Shokunin Kamado grill. I placed a fire grate into the highest position on the left side and installed a charcoal fence to keep all of the charcoal contained to that side. Positioning the fire up high like this is perfect for searing the steaks, but since we'll be roasting our steaks first, we just need a small fire. I'm just gonna light the charcoal in a single spot in the center. Our target temperature is 225 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. We start with the control vents fairly open to let the grill get up to temperature, but I'll close them most of the way down when we're getting close to our target. With an offset fire like this, I like to feed the fire from the bottom vent on the same side as the fire, but exhaust from the opposite side, which is where the food will be. This draws the hot air and smoke across the food while keeping the heat gentle and indirect. That's just one advantage of the cross-flow ventilation system in the Shokunin. Once the grill is at 225 degrees, I'm going to put our steaks in the indirect zone. I like to orient the bones toward the fire because the meat next to the bones takes slightly longer to cook. The steaks will cook slowly for about an hour as you bring them up to an internal temperature of about 110 degrees. Now that they've reached 110 degrees, I'm gonna pull the steaks off the grill so I can get our searing fire ready. I use my plumber's torch to ignite more of the charcoal and open all four vents to get the fire going. I also like to leave the lid open for a bit to give the fire plenty of air. After a few minutes, I close it to build up more temp inside the grill. When the thermometer reads 550 to 600, it's time to sear. This is one of the benefits of reverse sear. You can sear the steak at a lower temperature because it's already warm and the surface moisture has been reduced. Just like with sear and slide, I like to flip and move often, but at these lower temperatures, I'm gonna sear for a little longer, and I'm gonna move the steaks every 30 seconds rather than every 15. The reverse sear method delivers a uniform doneness to the inside of the steak, and it's an easy way to cook the perfect steak every time. Both the Shokunin Kamado Grill and the Hybrid Fire Grill can give you incredibly delicious results with either technique. It just depends on the amount of time you have available and the crust and flavor profile you're looking to achieve with your steak. I encourage you to experiment and find your favorite method. You can't go wrong either way. This is Food and Fire by Kalamazoo Outdoor Gourmet.